Howdy, welcome back to Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we entered Victory Road, had our final battle against our final battle? Apparently that the battle is a word now. We had our final battle against Wally, uh, which I have various feelings about. Um, I won't I won't repeat them though, if you really want to know how I feel about the Wally battle, you can go watch the last episode. Um I thought that I'm getting closer to the Pokemon League. I'm getting stage fright. In this episode, we're going to continue doing Victory Road stuff, fighting a few trainers. Maybe we'll even uh, get to the Pokemon League in this episode. That'll be awesome! Uh, there are a few changes to the team. Um, while I was waiting for my latest video to render, I kind of did a little bit of grinding. Um, so I got everyone up to a nice uniform level 55, which should like allow us to have absolutely no problems uh, for the rest of the game uh, with the Elite Four or the Champions. So that's good. Um, I think for the most part everyone has the same moves, although McPuff does now have Dragon Claw instead of Dragon Breath. Um, and I think, I think yeah, everything else is exactly the same. Uh, I don't have Plato with me, but he is also level 55. Also. I gave Cheerio the magnet to hold. It was holding a thunderstone for some reason. I don't, I don't remember when or why I gave Cheerio a thunderstone because that does absolutely nothing. But it was there, so I took, I took that off of Cheerio and gave, gave her the magnet to hold on to. So that's gonna boost her electric moves. Not that, not that Cheerio really needs that boost because she's, uh, she's pretty. <laughs> She's pretty good on her own. Okay, um, a while. Not a fairy type yet, so I could have used. Oh, I was gonna say I could have used Sanders, but I am sending out Sanders. But I thought like, oh, I could use a fighting type move, and I thought like my fire type and my fighting type are two different Pokemon for a second for some reason. It might have something to do with the fact that I'm like playing through Platinum <laughs> currently uh, with this. Um, and in Platinum I have a Lucario. So I, I I don't know what that has to do. I forgot what fucking Pokemon is about to send out. Oh, it was Kadabra. Shit. Well, Vanity can handle it. Vanity could have handled it at level 50, but... Now that she's 55, that she's basically unstoppable, especially with Rain Dance. I can't remember though if I wanted to keep Rain Dance on Vanity. I feel like I might. I feel like at one point I had some kind of different plan, although I can't remember now. Of course. Okay, let me. I got my map here. I just. I don't want to get lost, and I don't want to fuck up these like puzzles here. Okay. There, There is a section in the Victory Road where you can like go up waterfalls and stuff, but luckily I th think we'll be able to kind of bypass that, that part. Um, so hopefully I don't have to go back and, and get Nick Nick from the PC, because that would be an enormous pain in the ass. Okay, where are we? Okay, there should be a ladder here. Awesome possum. This is so complicated and convoluted. I why are there so many mazes in Pokemon? We've already we've already gone through enough, man. You shouldn't get complacent just because you have a lot of gym badges. There's always going to be someone who's better than you. Maybe not, lady. But the, I mean, as as soon as I beat the champion, basically, I'm like the best Pokemon trainer in the world. Or in Hoenn, at least. Or, that might not be true, because, like, of course, the champion is supposed to be, like, the, the best Pokemon trainer in the Pokemon League, I guess, but maybe there's someone better than the champion that just never fought the Elite Four, never took, like, the League Challenge for whatever reason. Maybe they were too intimidated, or, like, they just didn't have the time, but... It's entirely possible that there are Pokemon trainers out there who are better than the champion. I get you know, I, Julie. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have scorned you. I guess what what you are saying does have does have some merit, right? 
because like basically <laughs> essentially what she's saying is you know something that I've always believed to be true is that whenever you feel like you're good at something there's just remember there's always some Asian kid out there who can do it better than you which is a little bit sad but it's also very true <laughs> It's depressing. It, like, don't, honestly, don't ever think that thought when you when you feel good about yourself. Like that's probably the last thing you should be thinking about our, our little Asian children. But it's sometimes it's just inevitable for me. Like when I I play the piano, so like whenever I learn a, a song that's giving me like a particularly hard time to learn. I, I feel proud of myself, um, but then just inevitably, I think, like, or I'll watch, like, a YouTube video or something of someone playing the piano, and it's like, well, I mean, the whole point of, of, of having skills isn't necessarily to, like, be better than everyone else. Like, the main reason I play the piano in the first place is because it makes me happy, and I genuinely have fun doing it, but... I don't know. If you have, if you, if you do things just to be like the very best, like no one ever was. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that. But I'm you know, going back to the serious, serious tone here. If you try doing things just because you want to be the best in the world at it, you, you can fall into a very depressive mindset where you're no longer enjoying things that you might have used to enjoy just because, you know, just from the, the pure fact that, yeah, typically there are people out there who are better than you. I feel like if you, if you worry about that and obsess about that too much, then life is going to be kind of like one long sad shit fest for you, essentially. Because nothing you do is going to be good enough if you if you have that mindset, you know? Like, you just want to be the best, but in, in reality... Well, I guess, like, <laughs> there has to be someone out there who is the best. Like, I know so in some circumstances it can be, like, subjective as to what you would consider, quote-unquote, the best, but... Like... I don't know, there's got to be someone out there in the world that's like the like definitive best pianist. Okay, where am I? I kind of... fuck. I forgot where I was. Oh wait. Now I see! Okay. Um... Yeah, there's got to be someone out there because like... So I suppose like for that person... Yeah, that extremely gifted, talented person. I mean, good, good, good job. I don't like that's gotta be. It's this is like some this is like some really weird thought experiment shit. But like, oh man, Sue Shadow Ball. So, sorry to like bring such serious conversation into a game where we're like using imaginary animals to fight each other but there's got to be someone out there who's like the very best that ever was at Pokemon and I guess like I guess like VGC and, and, and uh, TCG tournaments can kind of like more or less determine who's like the quote unquote fuck I didn't mean to use Shadow Ball and Lantern. Ugh. Like those tournaments can kind of determine who's the best, but I mean again, it only really determines like who's the best out of the people who decide to to enter the tournament. So like maybe Maybe out there, there's some guy who is like sitting in a cave and he just plays Pokemon, you know, the card game or, or you know, the video game, whichever one you, you think is like the definitive 
Pokemon battling experience. Um, maybe there's some guy sitting out there in a cave playing Pokemon 24-7. He's like the best player ever. Like he knows every strategy. He knows how to he knows how to play the most complex mind games. But because he lives in a cave and he never leaves the cave, he doesn't ever he doesn't ever apply himself. He doesn't ever go to tournaments. He doesn't he doesn't play online because he doesn't have any cave Wi-Fi. So like he could be the best and no one would ever know it. This is some this is some philosophical shit, you know. All th all all of this this basically this whole episode's commentary was you know inspired by the words of Cool Trainer Julie. Was that Sableye? I didn't really pay attention. Yeah, okay. So I never thought I never thought that a Pokemon NPC would have such a profound impact on my <laughs> philosophical ideals, but I mean, there you go. No signs of tiring at all. All right, in the next episode of Pokemon Emerald, we are going to continue through Victory Road, and I can almost guarantee you, I don't want to like straight up guarantee, but I can almost guarantee that we will actually reach the Pokemon League in the next episode. So make sure to tune in. I'll see you then.